And it says we're live, but we have a black screen. The hell? This is new. <clears throat> can you all see us? I can see us. We're not getting anything. I can see us. Well, we don't need anything, so. Yeah. All right. Let's do your here. thing. All right. Um, if you would like to keep the heat on, because, and I, we, we have a black screen, so I'm going to be winging it. Uh, okay. So, uh, if you like to keep the heat on, because it's Texas, it was 40 degrees last night. Uh, donate here. If you like coffee, and it was 40 degrees this morning, so I drank a lot of coffee. You need to <laughs> talk to these folks. Um, King Harvest Coffee. So we're doing a uh, anthology with them later on in the year. Um, hint, hint. And if you like smart ass t-shirts, <laughs> go here uh, for your approved smart ass t-shirts. <coughs> yeah. Um, and swag came in. And I don't know if y'all can see that because we've got a black screen here. <laughs> but we have we have swag. Um, that we Space Marine stickers. Yes, Space Marines. <clears throat> You're up, sir. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I will start this with a rant on Baltimore and what went on. And the fact that I am so friggin' tired of idiots you could, spouting you their shit there. on the news <laughs> about how they should have done this, they should have done that, they should have done the other. And by God, we know what happened. They don't know shit, folks. They don't know shit. Plain and simple matter of fact is the ship lost power three times. Now, there's a lot of comments out there. Well, they should have had an emergency cutover. That only works if you actually have a genset running to provide your emergency power. The Dolly is a almost twenty year, uh, almost ten year old ship, nine years old, built by Hyundai out of Korea, single power plant, one man diesel. I'm guessing that it's been maintained by third world. Um... Cool. Yeah, that's why they're it's licensed out of Singapore because it can't pass United States ABS. Goodness. Just like 90% of the ships, including your cruise ships, by the way, that cannot pass US ABS standards. That's why they're not they're not flagged in the US, right? Exactly. Oh. Also, the fact, why didn't they drop anchor? Well, let me tell you, folks, right up here, although you can't I can't see it, this is what's called a capstan. This is a manual capstan, which, by the way, is in the wrong place. <laughs> <coughs> Ships today have electric capstans. So no power, no... No power, no, no stoppy. No goey. Yeah. Now, yeah, you can you can knock the emergency connector loose, the emergency lock loose. Fine, it falls, okay? The bottom of that river in Baltimore is mud. It's not going to a 900 foot long ship that weighs over 50 tons. A. B. Why wasn't the bridge set up to uh, protect itself from the ships? <laughs> the bridge was designed over 50 years ago. It was completed 47 years ago. There is a channel. Yes, there is a channel through the middle of the bridge. They missed it. They rode up on the salt, the silt flats next to it. When you can see the ship turn. The next thing is ship's masters and ship pilots. The pilots are experts in the harbor and river they're coming into. They are not expert ship drivers because they're on different kinds of ships all the time. They will go from a 900 foot long ship to a 400 foot long ship. Their job is to tell the ship's master or the captain, however you want to call him, what to do with his ship. Obviously set and drift played 
into the issue in Baltimore, just like it did the issue in St. John's River in, or the, uh, <clears throat> down in Brunswick, Georgia, just like it did in Tampa, just like it's done a number of other places. What happened is the harbor pilot will tell the master, okay, your ship's going to start drifting left, so you need to correct for that ahead of time. The other one's Evergreen hmm. over in uh, Suez, Canal. Suez Canal. The ship's master and the master got behind the ship. It happens. A thousand feet long when it started turning. The master didn't correct in time. Uh, Liz, we can see the comments. We just can't see us. Yeah. We have a black screen. There's just, just a black screen. We has the black screen. Black screen of death. Yeah. But we can see the comments. Yeah. Okay. The other things. Uh, yeah. Three football fields long, half a football field wide with a single one thruster. Ooh, that's less than awful. No. They're designed for passage. Okay. At 20 plus knots. Okay. I think MV Dolly could actually make 22. Whether she ever did that, I don't know. But that's that's a cheap build. That's the way they do it. <clears throat> yeah, Arkansas River uh, a decade ago. There are y'all do realize that there are strikes on uh, bridges just in the Mississippi. Yeah. Daily, much on a daily basis. Daily, if not multiple times a day. Yeah, good call, sir. Brass, hundred thousand tons, eight knots. Give or take uh, 50, 500,000 kilojoules of kinetic energy. Yeah. yeah you're not going to stop that. And, you know, they dropped the anchor. Fine. The anchor chain is going to spool out because the capstan is electric. You have no way to break it. As in B R K E, not B R E A K. <clears throat> also, I've been on a ship that lost power coming away from the pier because of bad bunker fuel. Bunker fuel is nothing more than bad diesel to start with. It's basically it's basically you get the crude out, you sieve the uh, the leaves and the branches off the top. Yeah. You have bunker fuel. Also, it's also extremely high hydrophobic, so it collects water. Diesel engines don't run real well on water. Yeah, that's what happened to us. Both engines online, no gen set running because they were doing maintenance on it. We pulled away from the pier. The water hit the injectors and we lost Clang. both mains. Yep. We were drifting down the middle of the harbor in Okinawa. Well, on. And thankfully, a tug coming from the other side. Hydrophilic, yeah. Philic phobic, one of those. Thank you for the correction, seriously. Uh, Tug coming from the other way managed to get us and push us back to the pier if we could tie up mm -hmm. and clear the <clears throat> water out of the filters and a few other places. Uh, another ship, bigger ship, same problem. And had it not been for the Japanese Coast Guard, they'd have been on the rocks. Every military vehicle I've ever driven. Yeah. Outside of a, of a quarter ton Jeep, uh, <coughs> out, somewhere between the fuel tank and the engine, there's a clear glass um, giant test tube with a spigot at the bottom. And you have to check that every morning yep. and after a certain number of hours to see if there's water in your fuel. And the spigot's to drain the water off. Yeah. Because uh, water in... Mo gas and multi gas engines is, is just no way no. Hey, Sanford. No, oh, it's Sanford. Yeah, Rick. Uh, big Iron Big Fish blog. He runs a fuel a fuel barge out of New York Harbor. Yeah. And I'm going to guarantee you, he does have plenty of stories about the quality or lack of, of the diesel fuel. Uh, Greg, they do have thrusters. They do have a single bow thruster usually. Got to have power. It's a through haul. And they're electric. So, yeah, it's got to have power to work. Uh, 
they did get a May Day out. Uh, that is true. But things take time to react. They say time to get done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The reason they're probably not sinking is the fact that they're stuck in the mud. There is probably damage on the bow. Uh, the question will be when they pull it off, you know, how much of the bow is damaged. They do have water com watertight compartments. So they probably, yeah, they're probably taking some water up forward, but they'll get it. Yeah. Baltimore mud for office. Yeah. Nobody that I'm aware of was hurt on the ship. Uh, estimated 20 victims, maybe in the water. I'm hearing it numbers between seven and 20. You won't know till we, we may never know. It may be 10 years down the road and they go to dredge and find another vehicle. Uh, construction maintenance crews on the bridge. Yeah, they're pretty much screwed. The, uh, you got about 30 minutes of water with this water temp. And, uh, then you're basically dying. Well, people, when I, uh, when I switched off from the, uh, when I changed from the pickup to the uh, roller the roller skate, one of the things I posted was moving everything from the pickup to work, most everything from the pickup to roller skate. And one of the things was my uh, uh, rescue me. Yeah. And um, I have, and I, I've lived within 50 miles of the coast most of my life. And I've, I have an unreasonable fear of going into the water in a car. Yeah. So that rescued me is so I can get the hell out of my car underwater. Why do you mean it's un why do you say it's an unreasonable fear? Because I'm 800 miles from the uh, from the coast. I think I'm I'm okay. And You're I a half mile from Lake Gordon. Yeah, yeah. Lake and Gordon, every bridge you go funny. over, yeah. you know, the number of cars that have been found in rivers, uh, in ponds, yeah, in the middle of nowhere. Now, admittedly, if you go into the Red River, yeah, you don't have a problem. You just have to get out and walk shore. Yeah, yeah. just it, yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Uh, a a story from when I was growing up over in Texarkana. We did some blackwater dives, and one of the ones we did was <clears throat> on one of the feeder rivers into uh, Lake Texarkana, and we found a car. It had been there since 1952. There was an army lieutenant who was coming from Fort Sill to the depot there in Texarkana. Went missing. They can clear that. Um, yeah. A wall. But that was, you know, almost 20 years later. Yeah. That, tr that car had been in the water for 20 years. Uh, did you find the corpse with it? Yeah. And the, we did. That was, it's always yeah. a question because lots of, lots of yeah. times you find a car and, yeah. The other thing uh, they're, they're talking about is, oh, my God, you know, the, the bridge is going to be down. The river is going to be blocked. Nobody can get in or out forever. Bullshit. They will probably have the main channel cleared in less than two weeks. Yes, the bridge is down. The bridge is going to impact primarily hazmat transportation around Baltimore because 895 and 95 which run through Baltimore, have tunnels. Hazmat is not allowed in a tunnel. That's why they were routed at 60, 695, was to go around Baltimore and not go through a tunnel. So what they're going to have to do with them is route them the other way around Baltimore on the other side of 695. And they'll be fine. Which is going to be, yes, a longer drive, but they'll get there. The trucks that are servicing the piers, 895 and 95, dump them right there at the pier. Yes, there's going to be an impact to service traffic out of that area and into Dundalk and some other places. That's survivable. It's just going to make the traffic a little bit worse than it already is in Baltimore. And maybe some people get the idea that, hey, Baltimore is not just a big city, it's a mega city. And I don't know why people need to get 
fuck out. Yeah. It's a city. Get out of it. <clears throat> yeah. No, I, I think all the people in the city should stay there, so they aren't coming out here and bothering us. <laughs> well, that's yeah. true, too. That's a point. Inner Harbor has never been nice. Uh, <laughs> the one time we had an attempted mugging was at the Inner Harbor when it was supposedly cleaned up. So, no, I have no <clears throat> love lost for Baltimore in any way, shape, form, or fashion. I don't like cities. I do not like cities. And thank God I didn't was not in the Army and didn't have to go through Hullabird out there. Aberdeen Proving Grounds. <clears throat> yep. We went over and came up the coast. We did not drive through Baltimore to get to I don't like cities. I do not like cities. I do not like cities. Uh, Sir Brass, uh, Baltimore is the ninth largest port in the United States. It is also the main port on the East Coast for, you're going to love this one, LNG transport. Liquid natural gas. Yeah. So it is... It is the main terminal on the East Coast for liquid natural gas going to Europe. Yeah. yeah. Padre says, got stuck in Baltimore for a week two years ago. Flight delayed out of Colleen. Missed the theater rotator and had to catch the next one. And you were probably happy to get the hell out if I, if I know that. Um. I'm going to do a quick downer, and then we're going to do cheerful stuff. Okay. Um, a uh, friend of mine and Jim's and Kelly's um, topped himself last week. Yeah. Um, apparently, long-standing chronic depression finally won over. Um, there are people you can call. Um. This one hit pretty hard. Uh, young kid, you know, new baby, um, named Matt Harris. Good kid. Yeah. Um, people, I, I, I am tired of getting calls about people, uh, old army buddies or, mil or first responder buddies doing themselves. I'm really tired of it. Um, this one hit really hard. There are places to call. There are people to call. Chronic depression, I realize it's bad. Um, I do, but God damn. Um, yeah, there are people you can call. There are people who will listen. Um, don't do this. This. Yeah. God damn! Don't do this. Now we're going to do more cheerful things. This is this is this is also why we call and check on people. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, on a more cheerful show. Yeah, on more cheerful stuff. Uh, my little book, short stories, is selling slowly. Not as well as I'd hoped, but hey, what the hell? I got five reviews. And they're all five stars. Uh, huh? You're ahead of my five reviews. <laughs> <laughs> um. Honest reviews are always appreciated, folks. Much rather have an honest one than a bullshit review. Right. Uh, I don't. I don't want a review that said uh, <laughs> one star. Love the book. Yeah. Uh, Postal service crinkled it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the proof copies are supposed to be here today, so hopefully the hard copy will go up for sale whenever I can get through the Amazon chop chain. The other thing I wanted to announce is we're going to do another library anthology. Yes, yes. Because our little anthologies for the library keep making them money, enough to fund some of the stuff for the kids. And we have, folks, We Iowa Park has a traditional little library. Um, yeah. They are nonpartisan, nonpolitical. <laughs> they just, they are good people doing they're doing what librarians have been doing for years. And we really are very fond of our little library. So if we can get it some more money, yeah, yes. We've made them probably close to $3,000 off the three anthologies we've done so far. The next one that uh, we're going to do is called Cattlemen and Ranchers. Five to 8,000 words due 30th of September. So, Cattlemen and Ranchers, five to 8,000 words due 30 September. And I will once again be the point of contact. <laughs> Shut up. 
stop laughing at me. <laughs> Jono, what did you what did you say that we had just sold a hundred copies of? Uh, Space Marines. Space Nick Netheries, uh, the editor on Space Marines three, his first time ever, and we just went we just sold a uh, hundred plus copies. Um, if you see Nick on uh, North Texas, he's a bit of a worry wart, so uh, let him know how happy you are and how much you like his uh, the editing he did on that one. Um, <laughs> yes, Wally. If you want to do space for cattlemen and ranchers, you yeah. can. yes, yes, because we we got a bunch of spare space cowboy stories. I mean, because you know, everyone who writes for that could write for you guys too. You know, <laughs> you can't, can't have the stories, we need them for space cowboys. Well, 12. I mean, yes, but I mean, <laughs> people have experience in it now yeah. because they've written for space cowboys, so they could definitely contribute to yours. And this company, this little company, is run by orcs. And little anxious squirrels. <laughs> so just you know, I don't know. I know which one you are, and I know what I'm Aww. like in the morning before Aww. coffee. Yeah. So, but yeah. Mean, so all these space cowboys, coffee? folks, you should be writing for Jim. So, what does she mean before coffee? I've seen her after coffee. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's <laughs> like you know. I, I think I definitely qualify as orc all the time. So. Yeah. Thanks for agreeing. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't want to catch a battle axe for disagreeing. <laughs> oh. uh, seriously, folks, uh, <laughs> if you want to write it, put it on Earth, please. Uh, <laughs> well, we we are. <laughs> well, I say that hell. If you want to, if you've got a story, send it. We'll look at it. <laughs> we are in the golden age of publishing, people. Yeah. We really are. Um, no, that's John in the background, Rick. I I I. I despair when I think about all the people throughout recorded history who were brilliant but never got to write yeah. or had thoughts and never got to write. Um, now anybody can. Yeah. Anybody can. And you need to. Um, now, sir, Brad, right. that's interesting. What, what about cattle who are ranchers? Right. it. Yeah. Write it. Some of them must be in agriculture. Probably, Julie. <laughs> Depending on which side of the agriculture they're in. Or who tried to write and got hammered for... Yeah. Well, it's just... <laughs> my father was a brilliant man. And he, he had a vivid imagination and told the most wonderful stories about little people and uh, Scottish... Scottish fairy tales people are not dim. If yeah. you think German, whoa, you think German fairy tales are bad, you've never heard Scottish, Scottish fairy. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> whoa, the things are just a little bleak in the hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but he could tell such wondrous stories and never wrote them down. <laughs> Write it, James. It gives a whole new meaning to animal husbandry, <laughs> to heiress human, to ranch bovine. Okay, it apparently am pun day. Yeah. <laughs> so do we do we have any cattle raising chickens? God. <laughs> you should eat more chicken after all. Is that cattle raising chickens or cattle <laughs> raising chickens? That would be Jersey's raising chickens. <laughs> no, but is that cattle that are raising chickens? Or is it chickens who raise cattle? Yeah. I hate the English language sometimes. Rick, that's, that's a good question. Rick says, Firebase, target silver, one cart, fire immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 one that's always struck me as funny about the Chick-fil-A ads. Is the cows are actually jerseys, which are no, milk cows. Milk cow. Huh? The whole things are like they're jerseys. Jerseys. You sure? Yeah, they're jerseys. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Scottish fairy tale if anybody survives. No kidding. <laughs> Chick fil A cows learn to spell in Baltimore. <laughs> yes. Well, but they spell too far too well for Baltimore. Yeah. Sheep herder versus, versus cowboys, chickens versus cows. Oh, God. Considering that, I don't know about chickens around here, but chickens in Africa are feral. Yeah. Um, and they learn from a young age that they are descended from the T-Rex, and yeah. they can act like it. Because when you occupy the same zip code as leopards, 
Um, I'm right. sorry, y'all are right. Holsteins, not jerseys. Where the hell did I get jerseys said. from? I don't. I don't deal with dairy cows. I I used to deal with beef cows. Yeah. I don't deal with dairy cows. Um, yeah, something angry in a sack. Yes, and the, the chicken, the, the chickens in West Africa. Good lord, they they had scars. Yeah. I'm just thinking. You tell I think your West African stores, and the one thing I never want to want to order is beef. Yeah, <laughs> zebu beef in uh, beef in Nigeria was zebu, which is a uh, a particular. I think it's Indian, but don't quote me that. Cattle raping chickens, Kelly, really? <laughs> that boy ain't right. Hey, well, we've known that for a long time. Anyway, I was about to make a, a duct tape joke, but never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kelly sent me his uh, Hobbit Noir story that I I cracked okay. open yesterday and then immediately closed it because I was laughing too hard to talk on the phone. <laughs> Oof. Anyway, um, and I've totally forgotten where we were. Yeah, don't go into any field that's got a bull in it unless you're in an armored vehicle. Yeah. I don't care what kind of bull it is. No. Well, no, bulls are not bad. Jeez. That cow, that cow with a calf that is very protective is oh. a whole nother Well, that game. actually that that actually well, honest to God, that depends on the breed. Yeah. There are okay. Um you can you can get a longhorn calf away from its mama. Be uh Beefmaster and uh Santa Gertrudis cows are really protective of their calves. Yeah. Longhorns can be. Longhorns can be surprisingly about the yeah. calves. We, we we had we raised mostly Herefords, Angus, and Charlotte. Yeah. And the Charlotte were mostly even tempered. Yeah, even, yeah. Take them. Yeah. Even when they had a Brahma sire in the in the for the bull. Yeah. Mostly they were even tempered. Angus were always even tempered. Yeah. I mean, you know, you walk up, you slap the bull on the butt, and you say, "Get out of the way, Jim." Yeah. Red Angus. Yeah. Uh, black Angus, but uh, the red, we, reds and blacks, same way, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Herefords, on the other hand, we had a cow named Ward Eye, she had a ward over her eyes. Why we yeah. call her Ward Eye? If you had to give her Catholic scatter spell, first you got them waited until she was close enough to a manger that you could reach out of the manger, grab the calf, and lift the calf into the manger. Which, when you're 10 years old, uh, the calf weighs as much as you do, yeah. Uh, and then you sit there and rock in the manger as they're getting slapped by this cow as you're trying to give this calf a scatter spill. Then you got to <laughs> lift the damn thing back out. <laughs> yeah. That's why you, you get Mama into a crush, and while she's locked in there, then you take care of the calf. Uh, they we didn't crush. have one of the <laughs> uh, there were There were times when... Uh, if I ever had a cow to shoot out of all the ones that I've known over the years, yeah, all of them. <laughs> okay, yeah, all of them need to be shot, but that's besides the point. Yeah, Ward Eye is the one that to this day, and I'm certain she's been dead 20, 30 years. Yeah, yeah, I could still enjoy putting a couple of bullets into her carcass. Yeah, <laughs> Kelly, I see things. Okay, Kelly's got the Kelly's post. Uh, I see things are going well at the furry convention. <laughs> I got tired of the those. There are two wolves inside of you. The one is X, one is Y, and it's very dramatic and very, yeah. very bumper stickery. So I made a comment one time within Kelly's hearing. I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, there are two wolves inside of me. I see the furry convention is going well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and poor Kelly. Oh, poor Kelly. I. I, I honestly thought I'd kill Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> RK, that does not surprise me that you or your sister would do something like that. Put a bit, bit under the calf's neck, climbed on and rode it. Sister was six. Yeah. Yeah. Calf riding is, used to be a standard rodeo. Movie. Yeah. yeah. Then the, the Karen's gotten you. Calf, as far as I know, you can still, some of the, uh, uh, Outer rodeo circuits, they still have calf riding or yeah. sheep riding. Sheep sometimes, calf riding. For the kids. For the yeah. kids. Yeah. But for the big ones, the uh, you can't, no, no, the Karen, you can't put children on calves. Bullshit. Like this. 
Yeah. How do you keep children off calves is a better question. You don't. No, no, you don't. Uh, That's like kids riding friggin' longhorns, fully grown longhorns. Oh, well, yeah. And you and if you're really good, you can teach one to carry bags of grain for you. Yes. That's, that's the thing <laughs> is, is especially if you have uh, children with female <laughs> variety. Yeah. I've never, ever had to get a boy, boy child out of the paddock, out of the corral, yeah. going after a horse. No, no, little girls, snag that little girl, get yeah. that little girl. She's she's headed for the kids. She's headed for the horses. Get that little girl. That's why I wrote that little girl in my story a couple of years ago. Horsey, yeah, boys. For the one, this is a one time, the only time boys tend to be smarter than girls. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and dogs in here. I'm about to be. I'm about to get corrected. Yeah, <laughs> mutton busting <laughs> is a thing there. Yeah. Now, now, I will say though, with boys, if you see someone. Chasing a horse across the field with a rope in his hand, yeah. beating that horse with this unopened loop. Yeah. That's a boy. Now, teenage boys, when they hit their teenage years and, and the testosterone blossoms, then boys get stupid horses. But I don't I don't what it is. Little girls see horses, it's like Yeah. It's like and the horses will come to them and will not stomp them. Normally. Ninety <laughs> percent of the time. Right. Normally. Yeah. Like, little the horses wanted to play with you too, Don. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll guarantee she was one of the little sprogs yeah. running across the field. Yeah. Horsey. Yeah. Horse <laughs> horse. Yeah. What the hell is that? About whether she ever wound up in um, What the hell is that? <laughs> Ag makes a good point. Horses have the mentality of a four to five year old human children. So kindred spirits. Yeah. Still love horses. <laughs> Female. <laughs> hey, Nancy, what do you mean little boys get stupid with horses? All right, fine. We're guilty. <laughs> Just some of us are smart enough to not get on them anymore because we're too old to fall oh, off. Oh, if I fall off, I'm going to break in about 30,000 pieces. Yeah. Rita, I, I don't know that Rita knows horses, so she's not a horse person. Yeah. But if she gets to be a horse person, I'm, I'm, I'm toast. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just toast. She gets that that little girl love for horses. Yeah, mm. I would not no. mind a nice horse that had been trained to work in stables, you know. And you get on it, and it walks over there, and it walks back, and yeah. it never has a you know a bit of shivering its back or anything like that. RK is a critter <laughs> magnet, according to Makaido. <laughs> yes, um, the thing about horses is. They are a giant bag of I need to die. Yeah. Um, Not as bad as sheep. No. Not sheep as bad are, as cows. Horses are smart. Yeah. But they just, if you look at them crosswise, they fall over dead. Yeah. Um, they're delicate, st stupid. Um, and afraid of everything. But they're, they're hurt but until they're not. Yeah. yeah. And then when they're not, it's something odd. You know, like a rattlesnake. Stomp a snake to death in a friggin' heartbeat. Yeah. Now, the fun part is trying to stay on them while they're doing that. And it's it's the cutting horses aren't scared of anything. Yeah. Or scared of, of really weird stuff. Paper bags. A, 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 a plastic Walmart sack. Or, yeah. <laughs> or, the, or the same itch deep puddle reached in deep creek, rivulet, you cross every day for six months. On six months plus one day, they see a dorsal fin in it. Lock up the brakes and you go ass over 10 yeah. 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 <laughs> Mud puddle. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the hate we horse that hated orange cones. That's a new one, but yeah, I can believe that too. Now, the question is, did they hate orange cones as when they jumped and ran, or did they hate orange cones as they They stopped it flat. Yeah. I, I did. <coughs> I, that era, we crossed the <coughs> same. It, it's in the panhandle. The creek's that deep. That wide. Creek. Hey, 
Six months. Six Richard, months. I hate to tell you, but horse <laughs> saddles do have ejection seats. It's called a freaking horse underneath you. <laughs> they will eject your ass right out of the saddle, trust me. Oh, yeah. If anybody says they've never been thrown by a horse. He's never ridden, never ridden a horse yeah. or a lion through their teeth. One of the one other two. Uh, <laughs> built in standard for ejection seats. Yes. Fond of horses. Like I said, trying to keep the damn thing alive is a full time business. Keep him in feed and keep him alive is a full time business. Hell, I've been thrown. I'll I'll make no bones about it. I've been thrown. I've been I've been thrown. I've probably been thrown more times than I've come out of the saddle, you know, on purpose. Yeah. And then there's trying to stay on the cutting horse when they're cutting. No, oh, Jesus. You know, for those of you that uh get the chance to go to go through Amarillo sometime, stop at the AQHA Museum. Yeah, they've got a uh They've got a uh, arena yeah. off to the side, and they'll do cutting comp or cutting exhibitions. Yeah, um, I love going to the ranch rodeo here in Wichita. Uh, we need to go there up, and uh, they have cutting horse competitions. Be and safe, sushi. So uh, Jim and I, we, the first one that we went to, yeah. we yeah. wandered into uh, the ladies' cutting horse, which I didn't realize ladies' cutting horse was a thing. Yeah. I, I realized that they're damn fine cutters, but I didn't realize it was a competition thing. And that little girl was, and that horse, whoo, they, that first one we saw was good. <laughs> yeah, they graduated from barrel racing to cutting horses. And, and they're like a damn burr in the saddle. Yeah. No and they don't weigh anything. They weigh like 100 pounds. <laughs> yeah. And the horse, the, that one, the first one we saw was a, uh, I swear that that quarter horse had, uh, more a bit of Arab in him. Yeah, it wasn't real big. So you got the uh, uh, you got this little bitty girl on top. So I'd swear the whole the whole mass didn't weigh nine hundred pounds. Yeah, and they are dancing. I mean, literally yeah. dancing all over that arena. And the, those those calves didn't have a chance. Yeah. The uh, yeah. Pole pole bending. Yeah, pole bending is not a, not quite hurting as bad as barrel racing. As I don't, I, I will say, I was noted as being uh, one of the few senior officers that thought women need to be in law enforcement, and uh, was quite happy to train women in law enforcement because yeah. they, they make good cops. Uh, also, I have no problem with, with women in. Uh, in cattle ranching, yeah, uh, ladies make damn fine ranchers. They really do. Yeah, um, I just I'm just not used to the uh, to see them in competition other than barrel racing. Yeah, now they're good at it. Don't the women's roping, women's roping. Woo, that's good. Yeah, and the women's cutting. Um, what cu cutting? For those of you who don't know, um, cutting is where you take a horse and you cut a calf <laughs> out of the herd. Which uh, you remove a cat <coughs> or a cow, cow from the herd, for whatever, yeah. whatever reasons you need that cow right there. A cutter goes and cuts, separates him from from the uh, the herd. Yeah. And cows are very, very, very much herd animals. Yep. They do not like, especially in stress, like in a corral under stress, they they bunch up in a big herd. So cutting one out is that is an art, and quite honestly, um, the cowboy doesn't have a lot to do. No, what I used to do with spots, which was a seventeen man Appaloosa, was I would point him at the cow that I wanted to cut out, and then I would get my feet as deep in the stirrups I could, drop the reins, grab the cantle, <laughs> and hang on. Because Spots would start spreading his front legs yep. and get down to where he was staring exactly at the cow, eyeball to eyeball. Lord of God, they look like giant um, um, border collies yeah. doing the play bow. Yeah, they will get they will get that they will get their shoulders down like a like a yeah. like a dog in a play bow. As a matter of fact, the statue in front of the AQHA, AQHA museum 
looks just like spots did. And I mean, the guys, the, the guys stirrups are almost touching the ground. That's how low that horse is. <laughs> <laughs> Set back on your pockets and keep, keep your eye on the cow. Yeah. And try to hang on. Um, spots dumped me a couple of times and finished cutting the cow out. Yeah. And then walked over and looked down at me like, where the hell did you go? Cause I'm staring up at the sky and the horse. You know. I was used. I was used to have quarter horses cut cows. Oh, they do. They'll move their front. Their they'll pivot on their back legs and move their front legs. Yeah, it's 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 scary as hell to ride and fun to watch. Yeah, that damned Arab would plant his forelegs and and bounce his ass in to ninety degrees. Damn. Yeah, he'd pivot on his front legs. That would spring me up royally. <laughs> So you, when your horse gets down and does that, you lean back in the saddle. Yeah. If you lean back in the saddle and your bloody Arab bounces his ass in 90 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> As Don said, sit on your pocket. Yeah. Yep. That, Watch the cow. Yeah. Yeah, that was all. That was always the thing was sit on your pockets. Sit on your pockets. Back in your pockets. Yeah. Eyes on the cow. Yeah. Now there is a bad there is a bad set of ponies out there. Oh yeah, they're called Shetland ponies. Well, wow. bugger those little bastards. Yeah, those are not ponies. Those are werewolves. Yeah. They are devils incarnate, is what they are. Yeah. The biting little son of bitches. <laughs> no, <laughs> really. If you want a really good cut horse, get a mare. Um, and the yeah, thing spots was odd because he was he was. Uncut stallion. Mm -hmm. Um, the uh, thing about the thing about cutting horses and and ranch horses in general, yeah. a lot of them are like dogs; they have to work. Yeah. Um, but they've got an off switch. When a when a when a horse is done working, he's done working. Yeah. Or she, it is done working. Uh, no mares. <laughs> <laughs> um. But the uh, when they're done, when a dogs don't get done, they no. go and go till they fall over. Horses, all right, we're done, yeah. and you and they are headed for the barn, and you can't stop them. Ask me how I know when they're done, Freaking they're done. Eyes. I had to walk back to the barn <laughs> after I swallowed a chew of tobacco. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Nancy says, I'll take a stallion over a stinking mare. I'll, yeah. I'll take a gelding every time, but I tell you what, some of the best cow horses I saw are mares. Yeah. <laughs> there are some Missouri mules are just as good as some horses. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Don, it does depend on the horse. I know my uncle, my uncle had quarter horses. Yeah, he, he had a bunch of odd, oddball horses on the ranch. He had Morgans, he had Mustangs, he had Morgan. I bet that Morgan was interesting. Yeah, that one of the uh, Vaqueros rode it primarily. And he had about forty horses. Uh, <laughs> Kermit got dumped by a gelding that was done. Yeah. Followed direction literally and maliciously. Yes. Yep. That's a horse. Yep. They can do that too. <laughs> no, there there are good horses. Good horses will work as long as you. But when yeah. they're done, they're done. I'm fucking done. I want I want this. I want you off my back. I want the saddle off. I want a nice comfortable. I want my I want my stall. I want you. We're yeah. done. And horses can have a vicious sense of humor. Oh God, yes. Throw you. Walk over, look down at you, and laugh at you. Yeah. What you doing? Yeah. What you doing, Zippy? <laughs> Padre, do you stand behind your product? Hell no, I sell mules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good mules, good Missouri mules are as big as most horses. They're not donkeys, they're mules. And how to load more slowly than trotting. Ow. Three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other thing, you know, you see in the movies, you see these horses galloping apparently for miles. 
That's bullshit. No, don't do that to your horse. They might be able to gallop a mile. Well, when they start blowing, you know, they're they're in danger right then. Don't 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 do that to your horses. Yeah. You know, you hear about the Pony Express and how they went a hundred miles a day. Yeah, they went through about 10 horses to do that 100 miles a day. And it did. It was not a gallop the whole time. Horses simply cannot gallop 10 miles. <laughs> you trot shaving your teeth out most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, a canter. And it also depends on the horse. Some horses are like sitting in a rocking chair. Others are like sitting on a tractor in a bad field. You just have to learn your horse. Yeah. You have to learn your horse. Yeah. Okay. And then you get horses that are like Tennessee walkers. That are five gated horses. And trying to figure out which one is the smoothest out of those five can literally depend on the horse. My mother had two Tennessee walkers and one of them third gear was the smoothest and the other one fourth gear was the smoothest. <laughs> <laughs> and of course you got to, you, you, first you got to figure out how to get on some of them damn things. You know, where do you get the ladder at? Yeah. Well, and then you get horses like Pasofinos, which are like miniature horses. <clears throat> they're very, they're small horses. Well, Arabs are small horses. Yeah. Well, they're I, even smaller. Pasofinos are even smaller than Arabs. Are they? Yeah. I know Arabs are small. I like Arabs. Yeah. But I talk about malicious. Woo. Yeah. Ar Arabs, Arabians can be, uh, they can be malicious. Yeah. Uh, they can also be the best, best friend you ever had. But, well, it's the same thing with the Lipizzaners. Oh, those are glorious to yeah. watch. They used to they used to cycle through Amarillo on, yeah. on the regular. Oh my God, those are glorious to watch. It's, if you've never seen them, folks, go see them. Go find a video of them. Go look at them. They're absolutely amazing. And what a lot of people don't realize is the dancing that the Lipizzaners do is actually battle training. They are the they are literally the war horses from the Middle Ages. And that is the dance, quote unquote, that they use to kill people, or protect a rider, and protect and protect a rider both. Yeah. But no, lip designers are glorious. Yeah. Watch. Glorious hairs above the ground. Yes. <laughs> but you have to have a clue before you ever cry, climb on. No, oh, no, you you, <laughs> yeah. you don't just no you don't just get on a lip designer. No, they literally. I watched it was a couple of years ago, and I think they train the riders train for two before they're ever actually allowed on one that is a performing lip is honor. Like yeah. I said, you have to have a clue. Yeah, I, I remember reading in I think in France, some drunk got into the uh, got into the stables and climbed up on one, and they snatched him off and tuned him up. Yeah. Ah, thanks, Don. Levite is protecting the rider from attack. Caprio is uh, attacking the enemy to the rear. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and you get that much weight kicking you in the chest, oh. even with armor. Yeah. No, I'm good. The front plate, the back plate, be together. I've I've taken I've taken a warning shot to the thigh from a horse. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. And if you ever walk around behind a horse, folks, which you should never do. Don't do that. But if you have to, put your hand on the horse and never let go of him. That at least warns the horse that you're back there. Because if you don't, I'm going to guarantee you, you are going to get kicked. Well, the better idea is to send Ian back there while you do stay in front. <laughs> you're young. You can handle it. Yeah. Yeah, they shod those horses with mouths of forethought. Yes. Oh. No. I like horses. Oh, they're most Brian. Most of the Lipizzaners can get all four feet off the ground multiple times during a show. Thanks, Don. I thought it was three years. Yeah, you have to train one for six years. Yeah, like I said, I, I took a, a warning shot from a quarter horse, and he was just it's, it was cold, and he and he didn't appreciate. 
and he didn't want to get up. And it wasn't his time to get up. He didn't want to get up. And he gave me a warning shot to the thigh. And I had to go sit on a barrel and breathe for a while. Yeah. Then he came over and nuzzled me. It's like, yeah. you fucker. You didn't have the warm blankie for him. Oh. <laughs> At least you don't. At least you didn't shatter your thigh. Yeah. No. It's just warning shot. It's like knocking. I've I've taken warning nips too, and I'd rather I'd rather take a warning kick than a warning nip because those nips, damn. They'd be called bites if it wasn't uh, the fact that it was totally destructive. Differs. I'm almost afraid to ask. <laughs> I uh, they'd be called a bite if it because you get a bruise the size of a burger from a yeah. Hatch on the head. The bleeding is, takes forever to stop. They got your last nerve. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. I but yes, that. kids, they're they're going to jump up and down on that last nerve. The uh, the that Arab had a nasty habit. He would get he'd take a big old mouthful when I wasn't looking, somewhere around here, and then just hang on. Yeah. And one time I had to shuck out of my shirt. Now he just, yeah. It's like, let go, get, get, let go. Yeah. Shucked out of my shirt. You stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got I got bit by a Shetland pony multiple times. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Finally gave that little son of a bitch away. I was he he figured that. They were figure out they Arabian figure really quick that I couldn't put the saddle on him. Yeah. If he had a death grip on my on the, my and he wouldn't the thing is he wouldn't get the skin. He'd just get the shirt. He got the shirt and would just hang on to it. And I'm trying to Yeah. Nope, 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 nope. <clears throat> yeah, Padre, you're exactly right. Kids will do that as much as we love them. Yeah. Yeah, Don, that that is correct. I cannot remember those companies anymore. What's that? The ones that would tour with the Lasaners. Huh. The no, official ones are in yes, in Vienna. I don't know. There's and they do tour Europe. They they in the nineties they were cycling through uh, Amarillo fairly quick. Yeah. I don't know who it was. Well, they used to do world tours. Yeah, Patton does get credit for saving some of them from being eaten. Uh, Michael, okay. Uh, Brandon did arrive safely and in time for the delivery. Yes. Um, he was there when uh, the uh, sprog was introduced to the world. Yeah. Um, apparently, everybody, everybody is is good. Yeah. Everybody's healthy and happy and doing the new family thing. Which means no sleep. I don't have children. Yeah, they toured Oklahoma City. So, um, how did we get off of horses? We went from cattlemen and ranchers to oh, that's cattle, right. yeah. Ch chicken raising cattle. Yeah, <laughs> and cattle raising chickens. Um, who's cooking this weekend? Uh, Peter and Doug. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the breeding stock was what Patton said. Remembering that General Patton, as a young lieutenant, uh, competed in the Olympics on the pentathlon. Yeah. Um, and part of the pentathlon is is horse riding. Used to be, yeah. Still better, better still be. I'm not sure. It used to be it was uh, horse riding, and the modern military pentathlon was the skills required of a dispatch rider. Yeah. So it was you had to ride a horse, um, uh, sword fight, uh, pistol shooting, um, running, and swimming. Yeah. So, and then he uh, his failure he coming in fourth in the pentathlon because uh, <coughs> at the time that Patton was competing in the pentathlon, your pentathletes had to use the military. Um, pistol or the pistol of their country's military. So yeah. he's using a 45 and um, was apparently good enough that they the judges ruled some of his shots as misses yeah. because they, they tore a hole big enough. Yeah, same hole. Yeah, so you know he'd ripped the center out of the target and 
was putting his rounds into the center, and if they couldn't find a physical hole, they were counting as a miss. Yeah, the question show. Yep, in cross country. Yeah. Um, so he came in fourth, and after that, he uh, he decided to make sure that never happened again because he took up tanks. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason the U.S. Army provides veteran services, vet services, yes. Veterinarian services, not veteran services, veterinarian, yes. They still do that today. Patton did design the last U.S. Cavalry Sabre, and it's uh, of the Sabres, it's my favorite, yeah. which I'm, I'm weird. Uh, a lot of people don't like it. I do. Uh, I, I have a particular fondness for the, the A lot Patton. of them got cut down in World War II for bayonets. Yep. I have a fondness for the Patton, um, the uh, Patton, uh, model yeah sir brass there's actually one here at the local air force base that is staffed by u.s army personnel Ooh, cedar went to the middle eastern market Ooh. yes and she's supposed to run and get beta. yeah half an hour later <laughs> <laughs> i like sabers and i like um side swords um my 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 favorite sword of all time. I like the Renaissance style of uh, of swordplay. My favorite sword of all time, not saber, but bladed instrument, is the the basket hilted mortuary sword, English pattern. George Silver, George Silver, by the way, um, wrote the best manual on fencing, bar none. I don't care what anybody says. George Silver. Um, I'm fixing to start a fight in the comments with that. Story. Um, <laughs> But the uh, the English pattern mortuary sword is my my favorite of all time. Yeah. Um, the Shivona, the carried the the cat hilted Shivona is a close second, but the mortuary sword moves so much better for me. Yeah. <laughs> Patent saber is a rapier with a confused hilt. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I think if we're going to use a glider weapon, I want a double-headed, double-bitted battle axe. I'm going to use a knife and a friggin' pistol. Oh, I said you see, I said for the bladed weapon. Now, my favorite way of fighting, yeah, uh, is to call up an army division. Yeah. You, George, <laughs> the reason this is to start a fight. There are many, <laughs> many treatises on fencing. Um, Germans manuals. Yeah. Uh, fact books, uh, German, Italian, Spanish. A lot of them wrote, a lot of the old masters, Fior de Libre, um, wrote some really great. And then George Silver came along. George, sometimes known as George Silver. Um, he came along and he had his, he had opinions yeah. about rapiers. He had opinions. Um, his, he, the the side the side sword, the hell is that fishnet stocking? Oh, for God's sake! Um, <laughs> the uh, he had opinions versus rapers, and his his he was side sword yeah. or back sword, or he he didn't like, and he proved upon multiple opponents that um, <coughs> he he his for him he was right. Yeah. Well, I've I've had three shoulder separations on the right shoulder. Right. So there's really no way I can swing a sword. So I never got into them. Well, that's what one of the reasons I like the Renaissance style of sword machine yeah. is it uh it it goes more point point oriented. Yeah. It's still cutting, but Renaissance is also known as cut and thrust. Yeah. And so there's a uh there was a there was a greater more of an emphasis on using the point. Yeah. Um and a lot more, a lot more intricacy. Although all sword fighting is intricate, yeah, the Renaissance stuff really gets into what I consider fun. Yeah, and you know, if you watch the old movies, you see some of the best choreographed fighting ever. Yeah. Uh, well, you've got some of the old some of the old actors yeah. that are actually taking taking fencing in. In, uh, in, in school, a, I'm trying to remember who the master fencer was that taught most of them. Oh, don't get me to lie. Damn it, I, I had I, I could see his face on the tip his, of my tongue and yeah. his mustache, and now I can't. 
Basil? No. No. He taught Rathbone how to sword fight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and short uh, close combat swords for inner city fighting. Wouldn't be wouldn't be a bad idea. Um Earl Flynn, was that him, bro? Earl, Earl Flynn? Earl. E A R L. No, that's not right. Um, there's a difference between sport fencing that you see at the Olympics and classic fencing, and I like I like both of them. Um, I like both of them. I, I just fencing fencing yeah. for me is fun. I took fencing in, in college and had a just had a blast. Oh, Errol Flynn. Yeah, not Earl Flynn. Errol Flynn was the actor. Yeah, fencing's fun. I, I do I'm love. I turn my head right. Hearing aids going pop, pop, pop. <laughs> Got you hearing aids. I can hear again. Yes. We'll have to get you a flight to uh, Heidelberg. <laughs> get his Heidelberg star. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, folks, we've wasted another hour of your time. <clears throat> yeah. Don't worry, Brian. No, Can't punctuate worth a shit. Either. No, Kelly, when he was born, they were still using bronze. It makes for shitty swords. Shut up, kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fred Cavins. Yes. Thank you. Cavins. Thank yeah. you. Oh. Uh, and Kelly, you can no longer pick on me for getting the best deal ever out of a gun show. A friend oh, of ours. Oh, oh, Guido Cabron. I hate him right now. <laughs> I hate he, him. He got a Fifteen to twenty thousand dollar pistol for fifteen hundred dollars. Revolver, revolver, gorgeous little revolver. Eighteen seventy seven Army Colt. John T. Cleveland acceptance marked. Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a hell of a deal. Anyway, folks. Uh, we'll give this another try on Thursday, hopefully with a picture on Thursday, so we can find out what the hell we're doing. So I can see what I look like? Yeah. Uh, thank you all. We do appreciate it. As always, remember, don't sweat the petty stuff, don't pet the sweaty stuff, and be safe. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Well, I can always... That's different. Yeah, let's the fuck over. Of course, you know, I said we'd send you to Hatterberg, get your dueling scar. Uh-huh. I can always lie and say this is a dueling scar. <laughs> <laughs>